Mr. Baggett? Oh, good evening, Mr. Screezy. I suppose you saved enough of your money for your rent? Rent? You promised me last week. To... Oh, the rent. Now, look here. If you're Have not... Have a drink. Now, look, you owe me $85 for two months back rent. And if you don't pay it, why, you're going to... Yeah. There's only 80 here. Take it out of that. And you might as well pay me a next month's rent in advance. I might. But I ain't gonna do it. <laughs> I told you he wasn't home yet. <laughs> Jeff, would you like to come up for a little while? That's what for. Better not, baby. What if he staggers in? Tomorrow? We'll see about tomorrow, huh? Jeff, what about tomorrow? Okay, Marge, okay. Come by at 8 o'clock. All right. you to stay away from that Jeff Calder. <laughs> Take the big man to beat up his wife. I'll do worse than that to you. To both of you. You won't touch me again. Ever. <laughs> Where do you think you're going? Some fancy hotel, maybe? <laughs> Park bench would be better than this creepy joint. Park bench, huh? Better look out for them stumble bones. I've been watching out for one ever since I married you. Where are you going, Marge? Well, like you said, to some fancy hotel. 
But you can't walk out on me. Look, I'm not walking, Sam. I'm running. But you can't, Marge. You can't. Sam, please, look. I'm up to here, see? What with Miss Keezy always needling me for the rent? I paid the rent. Yeah, yeah. You always have money for whiskey. Well, what about me? Look, I haven't had anything decent, and I don't know when. All the promises you made me, I haven't had anything nice. I... 500? Well, not quite. I had to give Mrs. Creasy her 85. Oh. Miss Oliver? Well, there are a few little things I had to buy. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Sam? Sam, where'd you get it? Same man. Yeah, same man, same place, same amount. What man, Sam? Friend of mine. Don't you think a wife should meet her husband's friends? Don't you think a man should meet his wife's friends? How about a nightcap, March, huh? Yeah, yeah. sure. Just you and me, honey, huh? Just you and me. <laughs> to Marge and Sam, for better or for worse? Better not get any worse. What did you say, Marge? Uh, for better or for worse. Called. Oh. Well, I'm late as it is. I'll take care of it later. Thanks. Hi, Mark. Sorry, Mr. Devery. I was held up in court. Okay. To meet Mr. Sheldon. Sheldon, Mr. Hill. Pleasure, Mr. Sheldon. I feel I already know you, Mr. Hill. I've been reading about you in the newspapers. It's wonderful. A man's convicted of murder. You offer your services and prove him innocent. It's quite a hobby with Mark. Hobbies don't pay very well. That's why I handle Mr. Devery's legal affairs. Yeah. To explain the project to Mr. Sheldon? There, you see. He just admitted that I pay him, and now he wants me to do his work for him. <laughs> no, I didn't, Mark. You go ahead and carry on. Well, it's something like this, Mr. Sheldon. This enterprise will be developed on a 40-acre tract that Mr. Devery owns outright. Now, besides these 260 houses, the plans call for construction of a supermarket, recreation center, a gas station, and a drugstore. Now, the project, including paving, sewers, landscaping, and contingencies, will cost $2,300,000. Mr. Devery will put up his land and $290,000. We'll require $400,000 from your syndicate. The bank will put up the rest at 5% during construction. With government approval, Mr. Devery, you can get a bank loan at 4%. I can't see why you won't do that. Our lots are only 50 feet wide, and government support requires 60-foot frontages. Wouldn't it be worth adding to the frontage in order to... Yes, what is it? Mr. Demery, I just wanted to remind you of your 4 o'clock doctor's appointment. Oh, okay, thank you. I'm sorry, I have to run. I have a doctor's appointment I'd forgotten about. Mr. Sheldon, if your syndicate decides to invest in Emmettville, I'd be more than happy to have you. But this is a sort of a pet project of mine, and I'd like to do it my own way. Mark, you explain any further details that Mr. Sheldon would like to know. You'll excuse me, I'm sure. Certainly. Well, Mr. Sheldon, we've put in a lot of thought on this project. From an investment standpoint, it seems like it's pretty sound to us. Well, Miss Hunter, if anyone calls, I'll be out for the rest of the day. Yes, sir. Oh, Mr. Devery. Yes? I wanted to remind you, today's the 15th. 15th? Yes, thank you very much. Oh, Mark, I feel sure the bank will approve of this project. They always have. Ah, here we are. Uh, Olive, Mark? Ah, thanks. Thanks, Frank. Here we are. Cheers. I know you never see government support, but they do guarantee higher mortgage loans at a lower interest rate once they approve a housing project. Do you have any particular reason, Mr. Devery? 
You're my lawyer, Mark, because I like the way you answer questions. Just answer them. Don't ask them. Uh, darling? Hope I didn't keep you waiting too long. Well, I'd say it was worth waiting for. Well, thank you, Mark. Martini, Barbara? Oh, thanks. I'm famished. You two ready? I'm afraid I won't be able to join you and Mark tonight, dear. Oh, Dad. Well, you two go ahead. I have to wait for an important telephone call. Enjoy your dinner, dear. We will. Wish you were coming along, though. No, not tonight. Anyway, I know you two want to be alone. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Debbie. I'll probably still be up when you get back. I didn't think you'd forget. All right, I'll meet you at the usual place. I can't. Meet me at Mike's bar. Back in the corner of 3rd and Edgewood. You can't miss it. Mark, how's Dad's new project coming along? Emmettville is a man's monument to himself. Why not? He's a self-made man. Yeah, and he's making his daughter so independently wealthy she'll never want to get married. Oh, Mark, that's not true. Right, then why don't you set a date? <laughs> well, this way I'm sure of your devotion. After we're married, I'm not so sure. <laughs> Mark, isn't that Dad's car? That was his car. No, it was wrong year, wrong model. You wouldn't make a very good witness. When are you going to stop acting like a lawyer? Well, you start acting like Mrs. Hill. Why, Mr. Hill. <laughs> She meeting you here. Sam? Sit down, have a drink. No, thank you. What's the matter? Can't you afford it, Emma? Come on, I'll buy it for you. Waiter. Give me another double. Bourbon and ginger ale. A cigarette? the usual. Five hundred. Didn't I say it's the usual? And I hope you don't spend it all on whiskey. Whiskey makes me forget. You know, it isn't easy, Emmett. Man goes to jail, loses his self-respect. You'd be better off if I didn't give you that five hundred every month. What do you mean? Well, you'd have to go to work. Maybe you'd get your self-respect back. But you can't do that. Why not? You want people to know who I really am? 
Why I went to jail? I don't like being threatened. Now, this is my last warning. What are you gonna do? You figure it out. I'm getting out of here. But Emily, hey, what about your drink? What's the idea of leaving? You ain't sorry, are you? You talk too much. Hey, Emmett, you got me wrong. Emmett! Oh, Emmett! You ain't sorry, are you? No, I don't know when I enjoyed myself so much. Seeing you again, being stimulated by your brilliant conversation. Oh, Emmett, uh, will I see you next month? Sure. Call me up at the house. That is, if you've still got a dime left. Oh, thanks. Oh. Damn it. I've been a ride. What happened to your car? Banged up. That's the reason I couldn't meet you in the canyon tonight. Take a bus. You mean you wouldn't give me a lift uptown? No, I wouldn't. Enjoy your dinner, Mark? Yes, very much. Went to Chinatown. Too late for some coffee? Never keeps me awake. I know nothing ever keeps you awake, Dad. <laughs> Be right back. Uh, your call come through? My what? Oh, oh, the telephone call. Yes. Came right after you left. I'm sorry we didn't wait for you. Wonderful, that Chinese food. Do you eat at home? Uh, yes. Uh, Frank brought me some chops. We saw a Rolls Royce on the freeway. It looked just like yours. Well, there must be a half a dozen of them in Los Angeles. That's what I told Barbara. Mr. Devery, was there something you wanted to tell me? What, for instance? Well, I am your lawyer. I will be your son-in-law one of these days. I'm satisfied on both counts, Mark. Now, if there's something you wanted to tell me... Well, here we are. Would you like a sandwich, Dad? No, thanks. Frank told me you didn't have any dinner. Oh, I, uh, I picked up a bite when I was out to get the paper. Cream and sugar, Mark? Mark. What? Cream and sugar. Oh, just black, thanks. Well, you might join the party. Sorry. Makes life interesting, Dad. Thanks. You never know what a man has on his mind. Set it back to 2700. Hey, you're here. What's the matter? Something wrong? Worse than that. We had it again last night. Oh, that drunken bum. He's crazy jealous. He watches everything I do. Uh, well, then this one over here is a little bit cheaper. Come on, get in here. <sighs> Jeff, you've simply got to get me away from that man. Honey, please. Look, Marge, he's your husband. Well, why did you marry him in the first place? Well, not for love, if that's what you mean. He had a little money, $10,000. <laughs> that didn't last very long. Jeff, you've got to take me away. But on what, honey? Well, maybe this will help, huh? That's chicken feet, honey. 
We wouldn't get very far on that. Unless... <laughs> Unless what? Unless maybe you could get some more. Then we could really go places like Mexico. Nobody would ever find us down there. <laughs> would you like that? I'd love it. You know, maybe I could put the pressure on Sam. <laughs> he goes crazy, Jeff. All I have to do is threaten to leave him. <laughs> Jeff, what if I do get the money? Hmm? <laughs> Hey, when you're through with this customer, there's another one up front. Good morning, Mr. Hill. Morning, Miss Hunter. Mr. Devery in yet? No, we had a bank meeting. It won't be in until 11. Oh. Mr. Sheldon is here with another man. Another man? He didn't say who he was. Hmm, thanks. Morning, gentlemen. Hello, Mark. This is Mr. Ross. Hello, Mr. Hale. Mr. Ross is a government appraiser. Oh. I've just been showing him Mr. Devery's plans for Emmettville. Because of the number of houses on the property, plus the four commercial buildings, the government considers its loan value a good security without changing the size of the lots. That ought to make Mr. Devery happy. He gets what he wants, we get what we want. Sounds reasonable. Sure these plans will be approved the way they stand. Oh, positively. Well, what about it? That's still up to Mr. Devery. Emmettville, you know, is his baby. Well, where you been? Shopping. Why, well, you wouldn't make me some coffee for you, lad. Well, I was fresh out. Besides, I didn't think you'd be up this early. How you feel, Sam? A sledgehammer in my head. Oh, well, I'm sorry, honey. Look, come on, sit down over here. I'll try and fix it up for you, huh? That's it. <laughs> there we are. Sam. Hmm? What do you like best, Arizona or San Francisco? That's a funny question. Well, I just thought we could go away to live. I mean, get out of this place. Be good for both of us. What's the matter? Have a fight with your boyfriend? I'm sorry, Marge. Maybe it would be better if we get out of this hole. Well, Sam, if we're going to start all over again, we'll... we'll have to have a little nest egg. That's all gone. Been gone for years. We'll get another one. Well, what do you expect me to do, rob a bank? Oh, look, you've got friends. Well, you've got one. Well, I couldn't ask him. Well, sure you can. For the same reason he pays you $500 a month. Year in and year out. Oh, look, he paid us $10,000 when we first got married, didn't he? Well, all right, he'll pay us another $10,000 when we, we go on our second honeymoon. Oh, come on, Sam, please. Marge, you don't know what you're asking. I'm asking the man I married, the man I love, to give me an even break. That's all. I can't, Marge, I can't. All right, Sam. Maybe it's better this way. I'll go away someplace by myself. Oh, don't worry about me. I'll be all right. But, Marge... Look, I'll be okay. You get 500 a month, right? Well, that'll take care of you. Marge... Sam, please, I don't want to fight anymore, that's all. It's just that... Well, I just can't stand this kind of life anymore. Always owing for the rent, for food, for clothes. Arguing when we don't have any money and... And then when we do, you drink it up in whiskey. And then we start fighting all over again. You got no job. Well, I got no privacy. No, Sam, I... Look, I married you and, and I love you, but... But this is just too much, that's all. Marge. 
Can I do anything for you, Marge? And in that way, Mr. Devery, everyone concerned should be satisfied. Devery Enterprises, Mr. Sheldon, are not in business to satisfy people. It is a concern whose chief undertaking is the development from financing through sales of housing projects. Furthermore, I prefer uh, bank loans to government loans because they're less red tape. And also, I find that... Excuse me. Yes? There's a call for you, Mr. Devery. I thought I told you I didn't want to be disturbed. It seems to be very important. I'll take it out there. Excuse me, gentlemen. I'll be right back. He said it was urgent that you'd know who he was. Yes? Just a minute. Miss Hunter, do you mind stepping out for a moment, please? I told you never to call me at the office. What? But this is ridiculous. If you think I'm going to give you another $10,000, you're crazy. You heard me, Emmett. I want $10,000 today. Sam, I'm not going to talk about it now. And besides, I... But I can't wait. Where? In the canyon. Yeah, I know, the usual place. You know what? Eight o'clock. Okay. Sam, be sure you come alone. You understand? You know, there are definite advantages to government backing. It might be worthwhile to reconsider. Look, Mark, I just got through explaining why I prefer to deal with banks. Why not let it rest there? Hello, Barbara. Hello, Mark. Why, Miss Hunter, how you've changed. <laughs> Don't tell me it's noon already. Just about that. Palm Springs is waiting. I'm afraid I can't go. Not at all. Not a town client just phoned. I've got to meet him tonight. But there's no reason why you and Mark can't go. Without you. Well, I'll fly down later tonight. Mark, you and Barbara go ahead and uh, I'll take Mr. Shelton and his friend out to lunch. See you later, dear. Don't disappoint us, Dad. It's a promise. Well, Miss Hunter, will you call my office and tell him we've left him? Yes, sir. Come on, Barbara. We'll have lunch on the way down. You know, I can't seem to pin Dad down on anything these days. Like father, like daughter. you lady you through with this customer there's another one waiting out front well happy <laughs> jeff calder the boss went to the races <gasps> well that figures jeff jeff i think it's gonna work sam's gonna get the money yeah who from no sam's too cagey for that he promised to meet a man in the canyon at eight o'clock tonight look my car's still in the shop so he'll have to borrow one what for so he can skip out no, to meet the man in some canyon, I don't know. It's all I could pick up. Jeff, let me use your car, huh? For him? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's all he needs, to see my car. You never see him again. Well, how do you expect him to get up there without a car? Walk? Wait a minute, Marge. What happens if he does get that dough? Well, honey, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> okay, come on. Take this one. I'm sure to tell him you borrowed it from a friend, a girlfriend. Jeff, how's your Spanish, huh? <laughs> With all that dough, who has to talk? <laughs> <laughs>
You're not sore because I called you at the office. On the contrary, I'm glad you called me. You're glad? Well, I won't bother you any longer. That's for sure. Did you bring the money? No, I didn't. But you promised. I promised to meet you. That was all. And that is all. I don't understand. If there weren't so many cobwebs in that gin-soaked brain of yours, there'd be a lot of things you understood. For instance, how I've dreaded meeting you here every month. Five hundred dollars is chicken feed to you. It isn't the money. It's just the idea that sometime you drink too much and then maybe you talk too much. Ever since you got out of prison, you've been a hazard to me. First, it was ten thousand dollars. That's where I made my biggest mistake. And then, five hundred every month. And I was in too far to, to quit. And now it's another 10,000. What's it going to be next, Sam? I'll tell you. Nothing. I'm tired of being afraid. I'm going to stop worrying. I've had it, Sam. Yes, I've had it. And so have you. Now you listen to me for a while, Emmett. Maybe I have got a big mop, but I've got a bigger memory. What happens if I tell your daughter about you and me? I'll save you the trouble, Sam. I'll tell Barbara myself. She's bound to find it out sooner or later. Better if she hears it from me. But, Emmett, how about 5,000? Might as well settle for that. Not a nickel. I've made up my mind. But you said you weren't sore. I'm not, Sam. Not anymore. Well, do you mind if I call you at home? Not at all. Anytime. No, I mean, on the 15th, you know, about the 500. What 500? Three guesses. Oh, I get it. Marge sent you. What do you know? That's it. You and Marge. Where's the money, Baggett? What money? Now, don't give me any trouble, Baggett. So Marge was going away with you, huh? Well, you won't get a penny, either one of you. Sam, 
thousand dollars. All of it. You didn't give me any money. Oh, no. I'll take the dough. You can have Marge. Oh. Oh, Jeff. No, no, he hasn't yet. Look, I tried to call you a little while ago. Yeah, I was out with a customer, baby. They're demonstrating a car. Well, you know him. The, the first thing he's going to do is stop for a drink. Yeah, well, now, there's nothing to worry about, Marge. Now, he'll get the dough. Now, just give me a buzz as soon as he gets back, huh? Okay. Bye. Bad, Lieutenant. You'll never know. He's still in the car. And we had to break all speed records getting here. As soon as you get through those time tracks, you better dust off the car for fingerprints. Hey, Lieutenant. See if there's any ID on him. Sam Baggett. Hmm. He's all yours, boys. Drive carefully. The life you save won't be his. What do you think, Lieutenant? He didn't skid off. It's too far from the road. Pushed, maybe? Who knows? I want two rundowns on this. One on the man, one on the car. Got a lab test for alcoholic content and look for bruises and wounds. Okay, Lieutenant. Tonight, you, you thought there was something bothering me. Uh, yes, Mr. Devery, it did seem to have something troubling you. Well, it wasn't that it troubled me. Morning, exactly. Jeff. Mark. Hi, Barbara. Spread along the table. Here you are. And for you, Dad, the stock market. Thanks, dear. Ah, well, look at this. Foul play suspected as man is killed in Plunge Off Canyon. I thought that would appeal to you. Always the criminal lawyer. <laughs> Mystery surrounds the death of Samuel Baggett, 52, of the Rex Apartments in Los Angeles. 
following the discovery of his battered body in a stolen car off Mulholland Drive early this morning. Mark, tell me, why are the police always so suspicious? Oh, that's part of their job. They investigate every accident. The case was premeditated. You mean murder? Yeah, listen to this. Stolen car, empty wallet. There's all the earmarks. As you say, it's probably nothing. Well, I guess I'll go up and change. Mm, you want that swim now, Dad? Yep. There was something you were going to tell me earlier. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing important. Be right down. Mark, I don't understand Dad lately. He can't seem to relax. I'm glad we got away for the weekend. Ah, so am I. <laughs> Who is it? Lieutenant Freed. Just a minute. I'm sorry to bother you again, Mrs. Baggett, but... Uh... Even on Sunday. Yes, ma'am, even on Sunday. Come on in. Do you mind if I sit down? I don't care what you do. Mrs. Baggett, what was your husband sent to prison for? Huh? I said, what was your husband sent to jail for? Sam? Are you sure? A routine check of his fingerprints brought a preliminary report from Washington. Samuel Baggett Served five years of a seven-year term in the Eastern Penitentiary in Philadelphia. Well. You didn't know about it, huh? What did you do? I ask you because I don't know. However, we'll have a full report later on this afternoon. I wonder if... If what, Mrs. Baggett? If that man that had the money... What man? I don't know what man. Somebody gave him $500 every month. So you didn't happen to find any money on him, did you? You're sure broken up about your husband, aren't you, Mrs. Baggett? What's the matter? Didn't he leave you any insurance? Sam should pay for insurance when he could buy whiskey instead. <laughs> this man that you mentioned, are you sure there is such a person? Sure, I'm sure. Sam had an appointment with him Friday evening. Why didn't you tell me this yesterday? Well, why didn't you ask me? <laughs> Goodbye, Lieutenant. This won't take a minute. I'll have the luggage out in no time. Coming in, aren't you, Mark? Oh, it's a little late. Oh, please, Mark. Just for a little while. What can I say? Say yes. Yes. Good. Frank will get the bag. Good evening, Mr. Devery. Hello, Frank. Everything all right? Two men are waiting to see you. So late? Police officers, Mr. Debris. They are in the study. Oh. Sorry, Mark. See you in the morning. Good night. Good evening, gentlemen. Mr. Debris? Yes, I'm Mr. Debris. I'm Lieutenant Freed. Homicide. This is Mr. McNulty. Good evening. Mr. Debris. Hello, Lieutenant. Mark. Oh, hello, Mark. This is Miss Debris. How do you do? Hello. What's on your mind, Lieutenant? Oh, nothing much. I noticed a Bentley Rolls in your garage, Mr. Debris. What's the matter, Lieutenant? Did I go through a red light? When did you go to Palm Springs, Mr. Devery? If you'll tell us what this is all about, perhaps we can save a lot of the questions. All right. It's about a man who was killed off of Mulholland Drive. There were tire tracks from a Bentley Rolls on the lot. They have a special tread, you know. There are quite a few Bentley Rolls in Los Angeles, Lieutenant. Mr. Devery, do you know a man by the name of Samuel Baggett? No, I can't say that I do. You should, Mr. Devery. The police report says that Mr. Baggett was a business partner of yours. Twenty years ago, before you changed your name. Oh, that's Samuel Baggett. Yes, sir. That's Samuel Baggett, mm -hmm. who served a prison term for absconding with funds. 
who met a man Friday night driving a Bentley Rolls on a lot off of Mulholland Drive. All right, Lieutenant. I did meet Mr. Baggett in the canyon Friday night. To stop him from blackmailing you? Don't answer that, Mr. Devery. No more questions, please, Lieutenant. I have nothing to hide, Mark. Not anymore. Barbara, I've been trying to keep this from you. I, I should have told you a long time ago. Yes, Dad. Twenty years ago, the company was called Baggett and Townley. That was me, Emmett Townley. We raised a half a million dollars to build a suburban apartment in Philadelphia. But before the building was even started, most of the money was gone. Stolen? Yes. Baggett and I were indicted. Finally, Baggett confessed his guilt. But when he was released from prison, I gave him $10,000. See, Mark, that's why I didn't want government financing. They would have investigated my past. Uh, Mr. Devery, if it wasn't your fault. I know, but by the time Sam got out, I was doing pretty well. I had a lot of big clients, and any talk from Sam would have been ruinous. I felt it was worth anything to keep Baggett quiet. Anything, Mr. Devery? I didn't kill Sam Baggett, if that's what you mean. But you do admit meeting him on Friday night. Yes, he demanded another $10,000. I purposely agreed to meet him and tell him once and for all, I didn't intend to give him any more money. Then he was blackmailing you. I'm sorry, Mr. Devery, but I'm going to have to take you downtown. On what charge? Suspicion of murder. But my father told you he didn't kill that man. I'm a cop, Miss Devery. You'll have to convince a jury, not me. Superior Court. I got the word. I'm sorry about your father, Miss Devery. The mere fact that he was being blackmailed should help him in his plea. Oh, it's all very stupid. He's not guilty. Well, he was there. And he certainly had a motive. I guess the best way we can help him is to find the real murderer, if there is one. I wish I could be more helpful, Mark. Maybe you can. That car bag it was killed in. Stolen, wasn't it? That's right. Where from? You trying to play detective, Mark? Well, somebody better. Okay. Happy Harry's used car lot. It's on Vermont. Now, is there anything else you want to know? Yes. Who killed Mr. Baggett? Come on, Barbara. See you, Lieutenant. Sure, anytime. That's right. You came to the right place. You were uh, looking for something flashy? I got a nice 53 convertible here, yellow with a black top. If you don't mind, I'm just looking for some information. Information? You from the insurance company? All this yakking about a stolen car. No, I'm not an insurance man. You recognize that man on the right? Are you a detective? No, I'm not. Did you ever see him? Well, just his picture. I never knew she was a married dame. Well, Mrs. Baggett? Yeah. Yeah. Comes around here plenty. Oh, so she didn't tell you she had a husband. Now, look, mister, you're not a cop and you're not an insurance company. I don't know what your business is, but mine's used cars. Sure, folks, just take your time. If you see anything you like, I'll be right in the office. Uh, mister? Yeah, anything I can do for you? I'm not sure. You know Mr. Baggett, man on the right there? No, I've never seen him before. How about Mrs. Baggett? <laughs> How about her? Well, have you ever seen her before? Huh. Your boss said that she hangs around here quite a bit. Yes, and another thing I said is that this is a used car lot. We got customers to take care of. Jeff, uh, why don't you knock off for lunch? Yeah, it's a good idea. Thanks, Harry.
Are you happy, Harry? Hello. Oh, Jeff, baby. How are you? Listen, Marge. There's been some strange guy around here asking questions. Now, if the insurance company finds out that I gave you that station wagon, they're gonna... Don't worry, honey. Look, if anybody comes around here... Just a minute. Somebody's at the door, Jeff. Yeah. When am I gonna see you, baby? Coming. Bye, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah, I will. Yes? Mrs. Baggett? Look, if you're another reporter... I'm not. I'm an attorney. Mr. Devery's attorney. Well, he's where he belongs. In jail. That's a matter of opinion. Yeah. Mine, the police, and the newspapers. Look, I didn't come here to argue with you, Mrs. Baggett. I need some help. Oh, I just bet you do. Look, if you think you can buy me off like old man Devery did with my husband, you're just barking up the wrong tree. Oh, get lost for yourself. Are you the manager here? The owner. Strangers traipsing up and down, up and down, giving my place a reputation. I know I shouldn't be bothering people when they're in mourning, but... Her in mourning? <laughs> I'm surprised you let her husband's body get cold before she started in with that boyfriend of hers again. The steady boyfriend? Yeah, and her a married woman. Even if her husband was a no-good drunk. This friend of Mrs. Baggett's, was he sort of pudgy, middle-aged, sour disposition? No, he was sort of dapper in his 30s. I think he sold cars. Haven't seen him around since the old man got killed. I'm not surprised. Neither am I. I used to hear him talk. And the things they used to say. You heard them talk. How was that? Well, you see, their apartment is right up over mine. Mark, I didn't give him the money. Well, let's look at it this way, Mr. Devery. If you had gone there with the intention of giving Baggett the money, then you certainly wouldn't have contemplated killing him. Of course not. But on the other hand, if you didn't take the money there, then you could have had something else on your mind. You talk as though you believe Father's guilty. Uh, no, Barbara, I'm just considering motivation. It's that word, if. If you had given him the $10,000, then somebody else could have killed him for the money. Mark, I just got through telling you I didn't give him the $10,000. Well, suppose, just for the sake of argument, we say you did. All right. So I gave Sam Baggett the $10,000. Now what? If you'll just put that in writing, I think maybe... All right, time's up. All right, Mark. Waiting for you, Lieutenant. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were someone else. Lieutenant Frieden? Yes, sir. Whom shall I? Hello, Mark. Hello, Lieutenant. Excuse me, Miss. Miss Webster, take those over to Mac's office and see that he checks them out right away, please. Yes, sir. Got something, Mark? Yeah. I have a hunch Mrs. Baggett isn't telling everything she knows. I've already questioned her. Twice, as a matter of fact. I think we can tie her into that stolen car. You know as well as I do, Mark, that what counts isn't how Baggett got to the canyon. It's what happened to him after he got there. Facts, my friend, facts, not hunches. Can you help me to get the facts, Lieutenant? The real facts. Look, Mark, I know this is more than a lawyer-client relationship, but don't go overboard. Well, there's something else. Yeah? Stop playing detective. It's strictly for professionals, and sometimes the game gets rough. Thanks. I'll try to remember that.
Good evening. Hello. Look, mister, whatever you're selling, I'm not in the market. I'm not selling, I'm giving. $10,000. What's the gimmick? A statement for Mr. Devery. That's worth a lot to both of us. You want to talk inside? No. Even if the old man did shell out the money, it doesn't change anything. My husband's dead and Terry's in jail. That's true, but where's the money? Somebody's got it. Well, not me. No, you had no reason to kill your husband for something that was already yours. As a matter of fact, for what still is rightfully yours. Mine? Ten thousand dollars? That's right, Mrs. Baggett. You're his widow, and whatever he left, Which including... Which was nothing. Whatever he left, including the ten thousand dollars given him by Mr. Devery, is legally yours. Now, think hard, Mrs. Baggett. Did anyone know what your husband was up to Friday night? You, uh, you sure about the money? Don't take my word for it. Look, mister. First, Debra said he didn't pay off, then he said he did. If you ask me, I think he was just trying to shove the blame on somebody else. Happy Harry's use, Carlot. Look, could I speak to Mr. Jeff Calder, please? No, thank you. I'll, I'll wait. Hello, Jeff. Marge. You crazy calling me here? Crazy nothing. Look, I just found out Mr. Devery gave Sam that money. Don't harm me. You were the only one I told about their meeting in the canyon. Marge, not on the phone. Look, I'll come over later. Never mind. I'll come over there myself, right now. Mark, did you hear that? Yeah, every word. She admitted it. Admitted what? That they knew about Dad and Mr. Baggett. Well, that's not much of a lead, but there's something going on. I told you she was no good. Whatever she gets, serves her right. Come on, Barbara. Serves them both right. Where were they going? Well, who are you? Please. Mm. Where were they going? Well, I don't know. I think they said they were going to follow that Mrs. Baggett over to some used car lot. Thanks. of parking way back here. I didn't want anybody to see us together. Look, Marge, Debra didn't pay off, you know that? But he did. I saw his confession. You saw it? Yeah, his lawyer showed it to me. No wonder. Now, look, honey, this is a trick. That lawyer has a hunch about you and me, and he's trying to get you to talk. Now, Debra didn't part with a penny. That's your story. And it's Sam's, too. Sam told me. Then now, you were there. Of course I was there. I had to make sure he didn't skip out with a car, didn't I? But then you. Then you killed Sam. Oh, come on now, baby. You know I wouldn't do a thing like that. Why should I? Now, look, 
That was an accident. I was lucky I didn't go over with him. Sure, you weren't trying to double cross me. Hmm? <laughs> me? Mm. Now that's a fine way to talk after I took such a big chance. And what for? For you, Mark. I wanted you to have that money. Then you do have the money. <laughs> sure, baby, I've got the money. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? Hey, let you flash all that dough around so the cops would get wise. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Angel, I've got your best interests at heart. And you know me. <laughs> okay. that money and we'll be off to Mexico. I still have to pack. What about your job? <laughs> Happy Harry can drop dead. As far as packing's concerned, that'll only take a few minutes, won't it? Jeff, why the hurry? I mean, maybe the police will want to ask some more questions. Sure they will. They're gonna ask Devery, not us. <laughs> He's really gonna make a good patsy. Hey, you're gonna love Mexico, Angel. We could only catch them with the money. Forget, Barbara, there isn't any money. Well, then why are they going up there? Your guess is as good as mine. There isn't any money, Marge. Well, Jeff, you said 15 minutes ago that there was. That was for one reason. So there wouldn't be any argument where everybody could hear you. But, Jeff, I... I... You're not very smart, though. Bothering me where I work, calling me on the phone, blabbing about me and Sam. Oh, what for, Marge? Well, for the $10,000, honey, for you and me. But I just told you there isn't any money. But Jeff... Now shut up! Listen, don't try and shut me up, Jeff Calder. Not like you did my husband. Either you get me that money, or I... <laughs> so what? Tell the police? Make it just like Sam. Always arguing. That's why he got killed. That's funny. They must have taken one of these side roads. So you double-crossed me, huh? No, Jeff, no, I didn't.
Come on. You better go along, too. Mark? Yeah, I'm all right. Now, Miss Devery, there can be no doubt about your father. Remember what I said, Mark. Stop playing detective. It's strictly for professionals. I'm glad you take care of the amateurs. We always will when the game's for keeps. But there better not be a next time. There won't be a next time, Lieutenant. Will there, Mark? Well, you heard what the lady said. There won't be a next time. Did he say amateurs? 